Welcome to Broadway Corner with Ashley Ha, where you can hear your favorite performers talk about how they got started, their careers, and everything in between. Make sure to follow me on Instagram and Spotify at Broadway Corner with Ashley Ha, and on my main Broadway account at Broadway underscore Corner on Instagram, TikTok, and YouTube. Thank you so much for listening. I hope you enjoy. Hi, everyone. Welcome back to Broadway Corner with Ashley Ha. I am your host, Ashley Ha, um, and I'm so happy you are here. Today, I am talking with someone who is also in Here Lies Love. It's been like a little series going. I think I'm up to like nine episodes now. I don't even know. I have to look. Um, but I'm talking to someone who was, I, who I consider like one of the MVPs of the Here Lies Love team. It is Angelo Soriano. Hi, Angelo. How are you? <laughs> hey, how's it going? Thanks so much for having me here. Yes, I'm so happy to have you here. Um, and I'll read a little bit about you. So, Angelo, aka, but people call him Jello, um, is a proud Tagalog speaking native child of the Philippines. Um, little callback to Here Lies Love. He was most recently seen performing in Disney's Aladdin on Broadway as a swing and understudy since 2015. And he was honored in a New York Times Magazine feature called A Star is Made as a dedicated Broadway swing and understudy. You can also catch Mr. Angelo performing with Miss Rachel on the hit YouTube channel Songs for Littles and he is also on the faculty at the Joffrey's Ballet School. So I mean you've got a pretty stacked resume so far in your career and you've done so much great work um, and yeah I'm so excited to, to just get to chat with you for a little bit. We haven't seen each other in a while and, and just how are you how are you doing how are you feeling in March it's March now. <laughs> It's, yeah, it's now March. Um, it's been about four months since we closed Here Lies Love on Broadway. And um, I took that time to actually go home to the Philippines. And so I had a really nice time just getting back in touch with the homeland. And after an amazing run, uh, seven months with the show, you know, I think the only thing my heart wanted to complete that that part of my journey was to really go home and, 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 you know, go, go back to where I grew up. And I got to see where my dad and my mom grew up as well, went to their province. And so um, it's just allowed me to feel even more Filipino than, you know, one would have, uh, would have been, would have seen me in, in the production itself, but I'm doing well and I'm feeling good and, and I'm happy to be back in the, uh, the New York, um side of life and all the things that it comes with yeah new york is what a city i mean it really oh, just yeah. takes your it takes all of your energy from you but it is so thrilling at the exact same time um but yeah i mean you were saying that you went back home and so starting at the very beginning like can you talk about you know your background where you grew up like how you discovered theater like maybe where you went to school and just what was your journey to Kind of getting to where you know you now were on broadway i was born in quezon city uh in manila and i actually grew up in a little town called marikina where i spent um my childhood until i was around nine and around two years of that of that growing up i actually lived in singapore um because my dad uh, worked there and so i got to sort of um, uh, be a Singaporean for two years. But other than that, I grew up in the streets of Manila and um, and was always interested in entertainment things. But I remember that, you know, that when I was seven and my mom would have to bribe me to do karaoke because, you know, there'd be a lot of karaoke parties in the house. And she, of course, wanted to show off her uh, her son and you couldn't pay me enough money to sing back then. I was so, <laughs> I was so shy and cut to today, you know, um, I'm on Broadway and, and that's the cool part is, um, I didn't know that I would take such a long and far path from where I was in Manila to the Mecca of musical theater here in New York city. And between, between my time there and immigrating when I was nine to, to experience the United States for the first time. Um, I didn't really have many opportunities until I started uh, training in music um, at, as early as seventh grade where I started as a drummer. And so that was sort of my first time actually being able to 
um, take an opportunity to learn and grow as an artist because in the Philippines, I didn't have too much opportunity there to um, take up the arts in the way that I would have liked. Um, you know, a lot of that has to do with money, of course, but also there was no musical theater sort of interest in um, the world where I lived in, in Manila. And even even today, it's 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 um it's still a bit of a a foreign idea about what we do on Broadway. But that's why it was such a big deal that we were able to represent the Philippines on Broadway um, in the most recent run of Here Lies Love, which is amazing. Um, between uh, once I got to the United States and I went to school for. Um, for music, it, I joined band and choir and marching band, which was my one of my favorite parts of high school. I was a snare drummer in in a competitive marching band, which um, and I kept going as a percussionist. So that was really fun because in in here lies love. I got to be a drummer. Um, that was awesome. Um, I worked a little bit in in um, the the Disney parks system I in Disneyland and Disney World. So I have I did some time there, um, which I guess just led me to um, book my first Broadway show in Aladdin on Broadway um, in 2015. Uh, and and like you said, I, I was there for about eight years and didn't leave until I found, you know, here lies love in my life. And um, um, all throughout those years, I've also been a content creator and a videographer and a music maker and a composer and a collaborator and a photographer and, uh, and you know, um, serving myself as an artist in, in the many aspects that I enjoy doing and participating in art. So that's what makes me full. That is my life. And that is what makes me happy. And we all should pursue what makes us happy. Um, and I'm doing that today. And in fact, after my run at Here Lies Love, I was able to take up more projects that uh, allowed me to take the time for myself without having to kind of think about that Broadway type of schedule that um, which was so fulfilling. I got to do a lot of content creation in Here Lies Love, which is really cool. Um, so collaborating is one of my favorite things and even better when I get to collaborate with other API, especially Filipinos, um, uh, artists to, you know, forward the message of um, what we do so well for the community and, and representing ourselves uh, as Filipinos on Broadway and beyond. Yeah, that's a beautiful answer. I think when I think of you, I think of like a person who does it all. Like you really just do everything. I mean, you're not just a performer on Broadway. You make your own things and you're one of those people that, you know, I look up to and sure many other people also do to just kind of like someone who is, you know, making opportunities for yourself and not just waiting for a Broadway show or waiting for, you know, some project that someone else is making. It's like you're creating your own art and fulfilling yourself through that. That. Um, and I think Thank that's you. what, you know, people are, are, are hoping to do more now and being like more, you know, multifaceted um, artists and, and just taking, you know, those tips from people like you who are really just doing that incredible work. Um, and yeah, and since you mentioned a little bit about, you know, what it means to be Filipino and Here Lies Love, let's talk about Here Lies Love. Um, the reason that I met you and the rest of the cast and company and um, just really that incredible experience of that last, this last summer and fall of having it on Broadway. Um, and since for you, it was your first time being in Here Lies Love, what was it like getting involved? How did you hear about it? It? What was the audition process like? Just how did you discover what the love was? <laughs> I I first heard about Here Lies Love when I joined Aladdin in 2015. And um, one of the cast members, Josh De La Cruz, um, in Aladdin was part of the, um, the first run of Here Lies Love. And so they had just been coming off the buzz of that off-Broadway run and so I was like wait a, a Filipino show and I missed it yes. um and so I always heard tales of this in fact I always since 2015 and when people sang it around um the uh, the the community I would always hear here lies love as the melody that everyone kind of just stuck with everyone's ears which was crazy which was my first um you know experience of that show and 
yeah, I had no expectations of of ever even seeing it again on Broadway, uh, seeing it again in the industry, and then had the opportunity to go in for it and be seen. And and I had sort of this um, long process of um, audition and and callbacks and final callbacks because um, they eventually cast me as a swing, um, which sort of um, becomes the final puzzle piece of uh, of, of a casting um uh page because you know you need your swings to be able to cover all the people that you um you cast for the for that company um and i was lucky enough to be chosen uh and and lucky enough to meet you know some of the original broad uh off broadway production cast members and did the show with them for seven months um got to learn a lot about myself uh, as a Filipino artist and the importance of representing myself on a Broadway platform, but was lucky enough to do it for a show that was just dedicated to our culture, which was the most beautiful thing and most beautiful experience I could have hoped for. I mean, it didn't stop feeling like a family event anytime that we would come to work and I would um, my rice cooker lived in the Broadway theater and I would make coconut rice for everyone. Um, uh, and, and we would have potlucks and parties and just any excuse we could get to, um, just feel at home and hang out with each other. That was the most wonderful part about that contract and, and the show itself, of course, the message that we were, um, sending to the world and, and what we feel and, and how we feel and how we want to make sure that the history that was um, written at that time is preserved and told in a way that honors the Filipino people and the people that were affected by the, um, the very story that we were telling on stage. Um, you know, as much as, as, much as um, I appreciate you for um, your compliment about being me being multifaceted, but as a Filipino artist, um, that's sort of something that I had no choice but to be because, you know, there are some things uh, in this industry that that makes someone like me, um, you know, have a hard time in in being cast for certain roles, being seen for certain things, or being seen as a certain artist in general, and. Um, I took up a lot of skills and, and, and outlets of creativity and, and art to sort of pave my own way in that regard. And, you know, sometimes um, taking that opportunity to um, make myself known and change the world and affect the world in the ways that I know that I can, besides being an artist, sharing song, dance and acting on stage, you know, how else could I for example, in Here Lies Love, forward the Filipino spirit and share it with the world. And so I found myself in that contract really, um, in that show, really tapping into that. Um, and it made me a much um, better, more whole person after, after it all. And I wouldn't trade it for anything. Yeah, yeah. No, it was just such, a, like I said, such a special time um, on Broadway and always hearing about the the potlucks and the lechon <laughs> and the rice and everything always backstage. It was like that doesn't happen very often for people of color and, you know, getting to share that space on Broadway and getting to just use the Broadway theater as like kind of just a place of community. Um, sure. And I, I definitely understand what you're saying about, you know, being a person of color and having to take up so many different things because there's not always those opportunities for us because you know maybe people don't see us quite the way we would want to be always and so mm -hmm. having to take up you know content creation almost out of like nece necessity because that is just how this industry is it's it's rough for um and it, it it's so much better than it was but um you know we're still moving toward towards just getting better every single day and every year. And as long as we're making those strides like Here Lies Love did for Broadway, you know, it's like we have trust that things will change eventually. So thank yeah. you for saying that. That was amazing. Um, yeah. 
And do you have a favorite, just one moment in Here Lies Love that was like your favorite in the show? And it can be for any track, any time, any song, or not even a song, like, you know, whatever you want. <laughs> I, I just got a little bit of a chill um, when you asked that question because reliving it is one of the coolest memories I'll ever have um, is when I played the DJ and before that role I wouldn't have thought that there would be a purely Filipino role that I could step into and feel like I'm actually playing myself. The DJ in Here Lies Love was in charge of bridging the gap between the, st the story and the message itself and the audience and the participation that, that was required of them. The DJ took you on that ride and that the experience throughout the entire show. Um, he sort of, he opens the show um, uh, not, um, after a pre-show like DJ set and then just welcomes a crowd in the most high energy fashion. and. That was really fun because um, being a Filipino hype man already myself, you know, I'm just always excited to, you know, get the party started and and get the ball rolling and and make sure that people have a good experience. That's already sort of in my nature. Um, when I played the DJ, I was playing myself. I was I was hyping up the crowd. I was playing with musical toys. I was singing. Uh, up there dancing up there and then at the very end I would share the sweetest most amazing song of the revolution written by David Byrne to the people in the audience and was able to lead the part of the show that meant the liberation of the Filipino people and there was nothing more special than the song God Draw Straight which is my one favorite song of that show. Um, everything else was amazing, but that one we got to play live and we got to sing and 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 like I said, play just to an audience listening to raw vocals and music and and really share a special moment with my fellow Filipinos on stage and and close off this 90 minute story that you know piece of history that meant so much so much to us and before this show i didn't know what it was like to come to the end of a show exhausted from the emotional value of the material you know um a aladdin on broadway was my broadway debut and was the only show that i had ever done until until this that um aladdin was full of life and full of joy and full of celebration and full of brightness and i i never felt what it was like to kind of be in a more darker morose sort of mood and, and at the end of a show and i had never felt like or actually cried so much doing my job because of like I said, the emotional, um, historical, cultural weight of of our um, of that show itself, and it was beautiful to experience. It was beautiful to share with my fellow performers, and it was beautiful to share with the audience that something very real was happening up there every night. And I would do anything to relive it again. That is one of my favorite moments as well. Of just. For those last four times that I did see it, I remember because of Aaliyah's track of getting to the front uh, <laughs> through the floor, you know, I, I kind of got the handle on on what to do at that point. And so I would always get to the very front and just like stare up at either you the first time I came back for the last four and then for the rest of them, Moses, just getting to look up and share that moment with everyone and looking around at all the cast members and just also crying my eyes out quite a lot um yeah. and, and i remember since i did see it so many times in such a short amount of time what was your total um, number seven <laughs> nice that's yeah. amazing yeah it was i mean good. yeah <laughs> yeah but oh, oh i mean i'm uh, that makes me happy but also sad because like you know i wish it could have been more and i wish some people could have seen it once that yeah. didn't get to my only two of my family members got to see it and come from from um, California. So mm -hmm. I'm glad anyone who 
was able to experience that show that was pretty much once in a lifetime in that regard and and that that special for sure so thanks for coming seven times (laughs) no it was my pleasure i mean i loved it so much and just every time i went back it was like i was alive again and feeling the energy (laughs) and i remember after either the second or the third time of seeing it in a row i was like do I have any tears left? I was just asking myself that, like, is there any more because it's such an emotional journey? Like I saw it twice in one day at one point and I was like, (laughs) I'm going to even cry at this point. And I still did. I was like, oh my gosh, this is, it's so touching to see because it's, it's, it's full of so much heart and really is an impactful story. And to have the opportunity to see it as many times as I did was such a blessing because I talked to people, you know, I'm from California and, and getting to talk to my other Filipino like aunties and uncles mm-hmm. about it. And they were like, wow, this would have been so cool. I'm like, I wish you could have experienced it um, and come come to New York to see it. But it's like, it's so difficult also with Broadway and, and trying to make it accessible to other people. But at least knowing that a lot of Filipinos, they knew about it was at least the best thing that they could have, you know, the cast could have done is just have that reach out to be like, hey, we're here, we're on Broadway. Maybe, you know, it'll come back someday. So I, I hold that hope. <laughs> I, you know what though, no matter what, it was amazing to see the, the Filipino people that could come, they showed up. <laughs> and of course, everybody else who's not Filipino, we, that was, it's, it was truly a blessing to have such amazing audiences every night because, you know, part of it was like the the draw of, of this very unique experience. And so no matter what, they were going to have an amazing time. But seeing, seeing Filipinos mm-hmm. witness us wave the Filipino flag on a Broadway stage. There was nothing more magical than, than you know, living vicariously through someone that could actually experience that for the first time. And of course, growing up, you know, I wish I could have seen a Filipino flag on Broadway stage, you know, before Here Lies Love, there was nothing like that. Um, and so that is something that happened and we can't take that away. Um, there was Philippine, Filipiniana fashion, on Broadway, there was Tagalog being spoken on Broadway, like those are the most magical things about, you know, having had that opportunity and it happened, it's history and it's, it's, it's amazing to, to have been a part of that. Yeah, no, I remember the first time I saw it, like walking, I saw it in the Mez the first time that I saw it and just walking around and seeing all these Filipinos and speaking Tagalog. And I was like, oh my gosh, they're all here. Like they're, you know, it's happening. And and the excitement that they felt and, you know, just the support that they really brought to the show was just incredible. I mean, people coming from the Philippines even um, to see the show was just incredible and amazing. Yeah, it was amazing when I would, I would meet someone at the stage door and I would learn that after the show, they would be waiting for us, all the actors, just to say thank you. Mm-hmm. And some of them literally um, were lolos, lolos and lolas and titas and titos that were there, were part of the people power revolution and would look at us in the eye and say thank you for telling the story. And I could cry now thinking about the fact that, you know, even if we had only affected one person, it would have been enough because, you know, sharing that the that this piece of history is is so important. And it's so important that we don't forget it less. Um, you know, it could happen again and repeat itself. And that was a big part of it was literally, you know, at the end of the show, we would say, you know, Imelda's son is now the president of the Philippines and there he stands, you know. Um, I just wanna say that the the biggest thing that I I wish could have happened or not happened as uh, was that they would, that apparently this this year was the first year that the People of Power Revolution is not considered an official holiday in the Philippines. Mm -hmm. And it just goes to show how much people fight you know, an idea that that um, disrupts the norm of of an environment, especially in a in in 
in in in what in, in uh where the Philippines found itself from recovering from those events. Mm -hmm. uh, it's it's so you know it's still even if even though the show is closed, it's still our jobs, you know, whether you were in the company or not, um, to join a message that promotes um the the freedom and the and the liberty that that we fought so hard for against martial law to get mm -hmm. to where we are today and there's still more to be done but um i feel proud to have been part of that fight and still fighting on yeah no i, I think what you're saying about how it is just so relevant in this time today the show here lies love is like a decade old i mean technically even older since david burns started writing it maybe 30 years um but just the fact that it is just as relevant now as it was then and it'll continue to be just because of the story with democracy and showing that you know there is power in the people um and just that in the philippines you know things are going a little bit backwards maybe um from where we were when you know corey was president or anything like that so it is just so fascinating to me and, and hard to think about the fact that you know things like this happen all across the world and oh, yeah. it's all it's a story that was way too relevant i think mm -hmm. uh, in a way of just watching this and being like yeah this is exactly what i'm experiencing right now and in, in in any way of in this government and that government it's it is just all too relevant always um and so yeah what you said about just making sure we keep it alive to make sure that kind of stuff doesn't happen again and trying to keep spreading the message of just um you know the power through the show so thank you yes so yeah of course <laughs> Um, so Jello, as we all know, you were talking about it. You were swinging here, lies love, which means that you had to cover a lot of tracks. Maybe you can clarify how many in a second, but you had to do a lot of things, and you had no prior experience being in the show, unlike Carol and Renee, who had both done the show ten years ago. You know, coming back, but you and AJ. Um, oh, actually, no, AJ was also part of it in London. Yes. But you are the one who is new to it um <laughs> so let's talk about like how did you keep all your tracks organized i mean i know you were an expert swing from being an aladdin but just what was it like trying to do it in here lies love with the whole staging differences and things like that and just how did you just almost snap right into a track because i saw you in three different ones maybe in three different days and it was seamless. I mean, no one else, I'm sure no one would be able to tell that you were not on stage every night in that role, um, witnessing you perform. So just talk about your process, I guess, of being a swing. I covered a total of six tracks, um, five ensemble, um, male ensemble, and um, and the DJ. So, um, so that's six parts all together. I only went on for five of them. Um, uh, so I didn't quite hit swingo. Um, that's what we call it when we knock out all of our tracks and are able to perform it at least once in its full capacity. Um, the only track that I missed was Nathan. Mm -hmm. But um, I touched his track through some of the, um, you know, some of our shows, uh, we it's closed now so i'll uh, uh there was some shows that um were were very hard to pull off because there was some covid scares that that happened yeah. um but uh so swinging is just um this skill that i picked up when i was cast as a swing for the first time in aladdin and there i covered 12 tracks actually 14 if you're counting the um the understudies so I understudied two um, of the principal roles, but I covered 12 male ensemble tracks. And so um, having done that, um, it wasn't as intimidating to learn a new show, though I didn't know much about it and I wish I saw it off Broadway and I never got to. Um, so it, it was, that was the most difficult part and you know, kind of trudging through something that was so blind to me. Um, but 
we had a lot of time to ourselves to really um, observe and soak in the information we were getting in the two month rehearsal process that we had, which was super cool because I got to watch the main cast um, who did it every night uh, just unlock the potential of this show and all of its new glory of the upgrade from the off-Broadway production. And you should see my swing notes. I can't pull <laughs> it up right now, but your traditional proscenium show, you have in, in Aladdin, I think we, we had um, five wings off to the side. So you just, you know, my notes were so simple. I'd be like, <laughs> okay, enter stage left one, which is the first wing and exit stage right four. And so, that was like super simple. It's just stage left and stage right <laughs> and downstage and upstage. And sometimes maybe you do an upstage crossover behind <laughs> behind the psych and like you had a traditional format going. I didn't know how to write 12 different exits and entrances from the the, the pit, much less traffic areas that took us either up to the mezzanine level or down under the stage so we can make a crossover or up in one of the four galleries that overlooked this basketball sized immersive stage yeah um, it was crazy um it was it, it was dangerous because so many parts were moving at the same time but it was fascinating because there was nothing like it um to the point where when I shared any of the TikToks that that captured the scenes backstage, which was actually um, the same areas that the very audience walks through to get to the show at the top of um, the evening, um, there there was nothing like that, that, that people had ever seen. Um, you know, uh, there is there one of our best best and most viewed TikTok slash IG reels was a specific traffic pattern that Gina, one of the actresses, had coming from um, uh, <laughs> from one corner of the stage to go all the way around and sprint during an, an entire song, um, during a phrase of a song to change shoes and then go up to the mezzanine and make it just for the next scene. and everyone went crazy seeing that because they're like oh why would you make her do such a thing <laughs> was the question but what people didn't know was that everyone had traffic to the same effect because everyone was juggling this the the jobs of the responsibilities of creating a 360 immersive show for for every audience member and that was the fun part about being a swing for that is because I got to experience every single one of those, um, you know, types of uh, tracks that that serve the audience in a special way. And and I think that was that was really cool because we as swings and everyone else, but especially swings, we got to know that theater so well. Mm -hmm. um, and, and, and it'll never look the same again. Um, <laughs> Unfortunately, but, yeah. <laughs> unfortunately, but it's it, um, it it's something that you know that is so memorable and so unique to that very show and that experience, and um, <laughs> it's definitely one of my most exhilarating swing experiences, um, especially because it was an immersive show that had to do with swimming through the public crowds that you know, every every audience is different every night and everyone's energy is different and the time of the year, the clothes that everyone's wearing, the vibe of the crowd, the percentage of Filipinos versus non-Filipinos. Um, it was dynamic and it was exciting. And like I said, dangerous at times because there's so many moving parts and yeah. dark areas and crazy traffic. Um, I actually like cut my lip at one point because I moved into a piece of scenery that was being taken off, but it was because I was doing a very rushed job of going around this like traffic pattern around the stage to get to another entrance. But that's sort of the price I had to pay for, you know, um, you got to just be on your game. You got to be focused and you have to just know your job, know your role 
and and take those notes and um uh i i went on a good amount during that entire run and so i was able to experience it with all of the company members um and, and share an experience with all of them um you know portraying the message of that show yeah i mean oh man talking about the swing notes i think i asked carol about it too it's just like how do you even think about the show in a way it's like even as an audience member you're just like where is everyone coming from and and <laughs> all of the complexities that you know it really was and to have to know six different versions of that is such mm -hmm. an incredible feat that i don't think many people could pull off i mean especially since you had all of your swinging experience doing what 14 roles in aladdin it's like you were really prepped for this almost of just having the ability to like adjust to things and you know I, I think I hear swings talk a lot about how you know you can't always be perfect because there is so much going on and just that like kind of aspect of it of just like going out there and doing the best that you can possibly in that time because it is such a stressful job and so I mean what a feat for you to accomplish and and for me to even just think about it is so incredible and just the way that your brain can work in that way and you know play the dj one night going for um you know aaron another night going for mm -hmm. like maybe anyone that could have possibly yeah. gotten you know gotten sick or gotten injured or anything you were always ready and so i just think that is such an incredible an incredible thing um I'm wondering how I'm I'm built a little different because I know a lot of people talk to me about swing life and their thoughts on how they can hold and be prepared to go on for any role at any moment. Um, but something about me likes that adventure of um and there's 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 types of two different types of performers in, in this type of topic is uh the, the performers that really love doing what they know every night and like they wake up that morning and okay, I know what track I'm doing because I only have one track mm -hmm. um, versus someone like me who gets excited at the thought of, oh my gosh, a new track. Like, how can <laughs> I do this one differently this time or kind of approach it a different way? But um, I won't find out until two hours before that show. Like there is something exhilarating about that to me because maybe, I don't know, maybe it's because um, my brain gets bored quickly. <laughs> I don't know, but um, it's, it's swinging is, is, um, not an easy job, but it's it's very fulfilling in a in a in a sense when you accomplish something as difficult, um, but as special and unique of an experience. Then there's 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 nothing like that and feeling like you pulled off something um, that is very hard. Uh, my favorite compliment is wait you were on tonight <laughs> as in i didn't disturb the flow of that show that happens every night and um i really feel like i had done my job when people don't feel that there is any change and that's what makes a good swing yes and i mean you are an incredible swing i remember one thing that i do remember very vividly was on Aaliyah's 50th time seeing it it was like a bit or something and you were out there you were like recording her coming in with your you know your nice camera and all that and like afterward i look at you and i'm like jello aren't you on today too like this was the pre yeah, it was on that night <laughs> so it was like within 30 minutes you were like recording videos and having fun and like hanging out for a second and then going and changing and doing a whole show you know right after that or i'm sure some swings maybe would be like okay, if I'm on, I can't do anything else but just prepare. But for you, you were like, oh, I'm having, you know, I'm having a good time for right now. And then I'll, I'll just be on stage in a, you know, in 20 minutes, it'll be fine. I was like, oh my gosh, <laughs> what a wild, what a wild time. Um, just yeah. to watch you, I was like, yeah, he's right there. Okay. Um, <laughs> Thank you so much. Yes, no, of course. I mean, it was such a, such an incredible you know amazing time to just watch you really shine at what you do best um and another question i have for you is what is your favorite filipino food because i have a lot of favorite ones i mean filipino spaghetti that's one i grew up with like i mm. love tigang and and the pork belly and and you know pancet and all these different dishes that i i know and love so what is your favorite since you are actually from the philippines and are very you know good with your filipino culture and and 
you know, the food and stuff. I'm sure you love it. <laughs> you mentioned Filipino spaghetti. Um, it, the, I've, I've come to, um, I've come to realize that, that it's that Filipino spaghetti is so special to Filipinos because it's the sweetest spaghetti you'll ever have. And it's yeah. a spaghetti that I grew up with in all of my birthdays where um, my mom would make them at home and it would come with that sweet sauce. And of course, like the, the, the homemade versions usually have like cut up hot dogs. Yes. Um, <laughs> and I found myself in a dilemma because I married uh, an Italian uh, woman from Jersey. So <laughs> she has a different and her mom and her family have a different idea, a very different idea of what spaghetti means. And I try to convince her to like it, like me, um, like, jo you know, get got her some Jollibee and, <laughs> and get, try to get her to enjoy it. It's it's not the same. It's absolutely not the same. I love it. Um, that's what I grew up on. Um, but it's it's definitely unique to the, the Filipino culture. Um, I would say my favorite one is my mom's Bicol Express. Mm -hmm. She is from a province uh, called Bicol. Um, that's where the Mayan volcano lives and in, in all of its glory. If you ever get the chance to check it out, go to Legazpi City and yeah. check out the biggest, most perfect looking um, volcano, active volcano in the Philippines. Um, you don't want to miss that. Uh, Gosh. <laughs> unless, unless you have megalophobia and, and you don't like to see things that large and grand. Um, <laughs> But yeah, the Philippines can offer that to you. Yeah, um, I'm looking at it right now. I don't know. I don't know the name personally, but like I, I mean, it looks similar to like other things I've seen before. But it, I mean, it looks amazing. <laughs> the Mayon volcano. Yeah, check it out. Um, that's where Bicol Express is from. Yeah, and yeah. it's this spicy coconut milk based stew that <laughs> goes well with you know your your standard jasmine white rice. And the spicier, the better. And Bicolanos and Bicolanas have a thing about um, being able to really handle their spice. And so my mom introduced that to me and I'm obsessed with that today. Anything spicy really. Um, but I also, you know, for me, I like to cook myself, especially in the pandemic. I got to cook a lot. I mean, I'm sure a lot of us did, yeah. but I got to really um, get in touch with my, my, my culture and learn a bunch of different um filipino dishes including um uh inventing some of my own that people have come to love uh i used to bring and it's kind of my go-to thing now um filipinos have this dish stew broth soup uh sort of dish called sinigang which is a sour tamarind based soup and i created my own version of a sinigang fried chicken um oh. so a completely <laughs> different experience but people loved it and it's kind of what i had been known to be uh by um every time and any time we had potlucks and at the broadway theater i would make them i made it for our first potluck in in the rehearsal space that we did it in in during the first two months um and and i was like Leia Salonga, you want to try my original recipe? And she liked it and it was really cool. Um, we haven't even talked about her yet. That was a really cool experience to just share a um, a show and be in the same cast as the Leia Salonga. So shout out to her. That's amazing. Shout out to Leia. <laughs> shout out to the Leia Salonga. <laughs> um, but, um, but I, you know, I'm such a snacker too. So I love all the Filipino snacks as well. So there's a bunch in my pantry as we speak. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's No, that's how I am with all like my, you know, my Asian snacks, my Chinese snacks. I'm like, that's all I have. There's nothing else um, in my room. Um, <laughs> and what you said about the Filipino spaghetti, I'm just like how that's like, I have a Tita Gigi who um, she's like my second mom. And I grew up with, you know, going to her house and having her sinigang or her, um, um, Filipino spaghetti or her like barbecue chicken and, and all the stuff and it just it always brings you back to like those memories 
of just being there um, and eating food with community and, and how it br really brings everyone together. I mean, not even just for Filipinos, but for Asians in general, it's just like, that is, that is our thing is like, you know, you eat food together, you take care of one another and, and you just share in the joy that comes with that. I mean, Jollibee is chicken joy pretty much. So uh, Oh, yeah. yeah, I know it's like, it's, It's one of my favorite things to ask people is just, what is your favorite Filipino food? And I will have to try the Sinigang fried chicken someday. That sounds Okay. so interesting. I'm like, one day, I'm, one day. I'll make sure you do. I'll make sure you do. Yeah. Next time you're in town, let me know. Um, <laughs> yeah, and I, I remember when we first had got a Jollibee in Manhattan, and I oh, was there for opening day. you were. <laughs> Oh my oh, God. I was. That's Because crazy. Jollibee was in there dancing around, of course. Um, if you if 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 you guys don't know, Jollibee is the best dancing mascot you'll ever ever meet. If you ever get a chance to have Jollibee at your party or go to a party where this guy's dancing around, he has the best moves. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, I I think I remember going to one in Manhattan before and, and seeing him and I that was one of my first New York memories too, was going to Jollibee with my family. <laughs> Um, and eating the good chicken and spaghetti and the, you know, the peach pie and mango pie and all that stuff. It's like, it's a memory I'll never forget. And I wish we had one in Boston. They have to do that soon. That's like necessity. Um, Um, seems like. we got to write <laughs> some letters. yeah. And I'm like, I can't find Filipino food out here. I don't know what, like what it is about Boston. <laughs> Get it together, Boston. Boston, yes, definitely. Um, and now I want to ask you a little bit about what it's like to create content, because I think I have learned so much from you just from like watching your videos, the way you produce things and, and just the quality really of the content that you produce is so high. Um, And really just something that only I could really dream of at this point of, of making. I mean, I bought those little microphones because you were using them and stuff. And I started using them for my podcast when I when I did one in person. And like I have, you know, this little this little camera, like like the microphone Yeah. Yes, and the trying Osmo. to Yes, I, I'm like, I'm in love with this thing. Um, and just trying Oh, yeah. to like create my own things and, and producing content that hopefully brings people a lot of joy. And, and you definitely did that for me. Anytime I would see one of your videos um, with the cast, either in Jose's dressing room and, and singing or, you know, the backstage videos and of everything, it was all just really fun to, to watch. And so, um, Like, when did it start? When, like, because I know it started a little bit after previews started. And, like, what was it, you know, what was the process of organizing everything, getting everyone to, you know, go and record? And, and did you sleep at all while you were in Hero Lies Love? <laughs> Uh, luckily, as you know, being a swing, you're not on all the time. And so I use that time for myself wisely to create the content. And the cool thing about that show was, as long as I had a camera around, something was going to happen that was worth capturing a moment like Jay making jokes, or, or Nathan freestyle rapping, or, or, or the, um, the, the, so So our, our ensemble or our entire company was made of male identifying and female identifying um, um, in the terms of barongs and ternos, which is um, our code word for each. Um, and, and the barongs, the guys would always be mess like messing around, joking around backstage. And so there was always something of them that I could TikTok. And all the ladies, they're so fun and and were always sprite and and beautiful and wonderful. And everyone was just so warm and 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 always down to just be a community, right? And 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 just um, you know, what every day was was fresh and new and if i as like i said I, as long as i had a camera around i was going to get something magical and beautiful and um i'm super big on music videos music videos uh collaborations music collaborations and projects that that allowed the especially all filipinos to come together and create something nice um that sort of made itself and definitely i got to the we created the series called Here Lies Love Unplugged, which featured all of the 
songs from the show, but reimagined in a different arrangement um, with the help of a, uh, uh, our singers, our performers, but also our musicians who partook and even helped me arrange Justin Ramos shout outs. Um, and we were able to create 10 of those by the time, you know, we we ended the show and of course ending with God Draw Straight. Um, I think that's the series out of that entire run that I'm most proud of because it immortalized the, the work, um, not necessarily the same work that we did on stage, but the spirit of the songs, the amazing songs that uh, David Byrne and Fatboy Slim wrote. And he, it was cool because David Byrne himself um, gave me the blessing to um, create the series and reimagine all of the songs, um, not just to promote the show, but, you know, to give this fresh take on this existing music that had been around and since, you know, the, the off-Broadway run in 2013, I believe. Yeah. And um, so we were able to uh, create just this fresh set of music videos that people got to enjoy which is awesome um and like i said all the backstage stuff were was always just exciting to um to see what i could come home and edit and come <laughs> back and post the next day because it was full of life full of energy full of laughs you know um the filipino laughter is definitely quite something else when you get to, when you get it going it's um, everyone just shares in the joy of it in the same house, and there was nothing cooler than that. Mm -hmm, definitely. Um, and since I am very much trying to, you know, get into the the teching tech kind of world, um, like what is the process of actually creating a video like that? Because we see the product, but we don't always see what goes into it, where you have these little microphones that people have, you have the bigger microphones, you have all these different things that you kind of have to bring together and mix and master to create the product and also maybe put, you know, whatever videos that need to be changed or, or, you know, the zoom out. I don't know if that was live or if that was in post, like just what was it? What is your process, I guess, of editing the videos and putting it all together? Because I am just very interested in that kind of aspect of it, of the technical stuff. <laughs> yeah. When, when David Byrne gave us the blessing to, you know, to create stuff out of his, his compositions, um, it just took getting the right people together who you know really wanted to partake in that immortalization of the song that you know is going to live on instagram forever and for us it was just about getting together setting aside the time to um take these songs that we knew and loved and reimagining them in the way that our spirit took us and um, we were able to visit different genres to um to reimagine these songs and they were all just pretty much one take sessions mm -hmm. and and you know even if we recorded a few versions of it um we we would do them all in one day in one sitting and record it live and I just had a camera on a tripod and then did all the movements in post mm -hmm. and so I just made sure that I was able to capture that you know um uh thankfully and wonderfully uh, Jose Lana was uh able to provide us his amazing star dressing room um to create that series and and even he was telling me like Hey, at least all of all of the things that he did to decorate that space in the way that it was, um, were, wasn't wasted because it was beautiful and it was a beautiful place to create those um, wonderful renditions that we were able to put out. Yeah. And um, what I said to every actor or every musician and artist that came in there and did that series with me is just all it takes is for people to want to come together and make something beautiful. All it takes is a yes to to come together and collaborate and join forces because it 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 does become that much easier when it comes to you know being a team and creating something magical and beautifully artistic together. Um, and as Filipinos loving karaoke culture, etc., um, it was easy. We were just 
all right, let's sing this song and let's sing it in a jazzy way or let's do it in a way that's like R&B and pop and rock and and bossa nova and a cappella and yeah, it was it was a fun journey to kind of re-explore the show and rediscover it in a way that no one had ever heard of before. And um we came off the series, you know, on a high and with a bang. So it was awesome. Yeah, definitely. They were they were like the highlights of my days when I would see them. I'd be like, oh my gosh, there's another one. Um, and, you know, try to support it online and, and just listen to it over and over again, pretty much, um, because it was just such a special thing that you, you guys put out into the world and allowed people to experience the music in a different way, um, which I loved so much. Um, and so for you, like going on a different note, like what did it mean for you to be playing a Filipino character on stage? Like, has that ever happened for you? Because I know there was like a couple people, they had played Filipino before, but was this for your, for your first time um, playing your own ethnicity on stage? Absolutely. Uh, before, before Here Lies Love, I had only been in Aladdin and um, so beautiful thing about that show is is a very diverse show as well. So I I got to play a version of of that, um, but not a an explicitly Filipino role that told a Filipino story, and and having been in that company, I would remind myself every day of the responsibility um, that we had to tell the story and tell it right mm -hmm. from the right viewpoint and with the right facts and we had a two two three day dramaturgy session with the producers and our directors to um to create that show and to make sure that you know none of it was misinformation and things that um contributed to the um the propaganda of that time you know this our version of it was definitely an artistic retelling but it was it was true to the events and true to the emotions that it came with um and so that responsibility never left every night we, we would do that show we had a purpose and that's why we were talking about it earlier that's why we would get to the end of the show and we couldn't hold back our tears because it was it meant so much to us that we represent just the 20 something or so of us in the in that company represented an entire nation mm -hmm. and whether you know some filipinos agree with that message or not um it was still an important job for us as artists on a broadway platform um even when people were protesting against the show Mm -hmm. Our job remained the same, was to do what we do as performers, to, to share this experience to the people. Yeah. And it, it, it was our own people power revolution at the end of it. Um, mm -hmm. We made it ourselves, we made it our own. And, and, and it was in some ways bigger than that piece of history itself, because we were creating it at that very moment, being Filipinos on Broadway, period. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. That is is beautiful. And just the, you know, the ability to be yourself on a stage. And, you know, when you play the DJ, you are yourself. And in, in any of the roles, really, you were just being yourself on a stage. And for Asian people, that doesn't happen very often where we're playing other ethnicities and not always being true yeah. to exactly who we are. And that's just kind of what it's been like, um, you know, for a while. But I mean, for Lea Salonga to finally play a Filipino, for everyone else to discover mm -hmm. like their culture in a different way was so special. And the fact that it happened is almost like, oh my gosh, was that real? Like that was, but an experience of of people getting to just fully be themselves on a stage and yes it's acting yes it's performing yes it's you're putting on something in a way but it's when you can be yourself fully and truly on a stage i think that's when the truth shines through the very most and so there was just so much that you know that was really so special <laughs> i think i always so true, that. Yeah. So true. 
Yeah. And, and lastly, um, last question, I think I just want to ask you, what is your advice to the Filipino and just Asian youth who are wanting to pursue performing because it is such a hard journey um, to get to where you were and in, in last year and, and the years prior in Aladdin and just what was what would your advice be for them? Because recently we had an, an event here at Boston Conservatory called Uni Rooted in Unity, where three Filipino students sang God Draw Straight um, for oh, yeah. the show for the cabaret. And so yeah. it was cool that they at least had that message to share. And so what is your message to people like them who are just really trying to promote the message of representation? Thank you. That's a great question. Um, there's there's a long road ahead for us and in the battle of representation. There's still a lot to be done, but Here Lies Love opened some big doors for not just AAPI, but especially for Filipinos. On Broadway or in the and and adjacent industries, um, but sometimes instead of fighting for the spotlight, I believe that we can create our own. Instead of fighting for the platform, I believe we can create our own, and that's the sort of focus that I have found myself in as a content creator, as a creative director of my own, as a collaborator who wants to be responsible for their own projects and, and responsible for paving their own way. I feel like that is something that we can also um, remind ourselves is that we also have an opportunity to create our own way of being seen make our own noise and voice um you know be our own voice for for paving that way um even if it is a, a long road ahead of us as far as fighting for representation on broadway and beyond you know tv film music industry anything um i think that it's important to remember that it is also in your power to be able to manifest that in your own way um, and to play to your own strengths. For me, it was content creation, videography, photography, music, and 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 um, sometimes it just takes connecting with someone else with that same interest to really fulfill that dream. Mm -hmm. That's beautiful. Thank you. Thank you so much for that. Um, and to kind of wrap up, just do you have anything else that you would like to share um, with anyone who could be listening? I, I would just say, um, be grateful for the opportunities that are are given to you, because you never know how short lived they may be. And as artists, we we learn how to move on from our personal art and and sort of leave that part of our lives to go on and create more and i think that um that's all we can do at the end of it at the end of the day is is just to be ourselves and and to go on life fighting for what you believe in and um creating those opportunities when you can um and as a filipino man um uh, today, I, I, you know, I, I keep myself responsible for that. I keep myself accountable of those goals, and I hope that um, someone else can walk away, especially maybe after listening to this conversation, knowing that they can do it too. That's amazing. Thank you so much, Jello. Um, and just thank you for taking the time to speak with me today about your incredible journey, really, with Here Lies Love and just being on Broadway. Um, I know you were just such an inspiration to a lot of people and, and you're doing such incredible work. And so just thank you so much. And thank you to everyone listening. Please make sure to go follow Jello on everything. I mean, I will link every I will link all the all of the socials later on um, down below. So make sure you go and support him and just continue to 
support BIPOC stories and make sure that, you know, Here Lies Love, maybe next time can continue on a little bit longer. Um, so thank you so much. And we will, we will see you next time. <laughs> thank you all for listening. Ashley, thank you so much for having me. I appreciate you and everything you do. Thank you so much. We will see you later. Bye. Yeah. <laughs> You've been listening to Broadway Corner with Ashley Hall. Thank you so much for tuning in. I'll see you next time.